everybody. Um, <clears throat> my name's Jody. <clears throat> I'm just kind of waiting for a few more people to sign up. Just starting my Facebook Live. Um, so I'm just going to be talking a bit about the things that you see here. A lot of times I get asked questions from my scrapbooking friends and also some of my card making friends. You know, I don't know a lot about mixed media. I don't know what some of the gels and the paste and any of all that stuff do. So I kind of just wanted to pop in and do a Facebook Live and just kind of give you a quick overview of some of these things. So, um, like I said, I'm still waiting for a few more people. And I hope everyone's uh, had a good evening or having a good weekend so far. Sad that it's over, but <laughs> um, I appreciate everyone coming in and talking with me and watching my video. Still got another minute or two. Still trying to get my technological side here all set up. So, and like I said, I'm going to be talking a bit about um, ways you can use all these different products. Um, we're also going to be focusing tonight on the modeling paste. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, as I said, my name's Jody. I'm actually a Prima educator. Excuse me, for 2020, um, I actually teach card making and uh, scrapbooking classes. Um, for those of you who don't know, I own my store a number of years ago for about seven years and did all kinds of stuff, uh, classes-wise and teaching and that sort of thing. And I enjoy it. I enjoy helping people kind of get more use out of their products and at least know what things do. So as I said tonight, <clears throat> I just kind of wanted to pop in. It's not going to be sort of a, a formal finished project per se. Um, more just different techniques and things you can, you know, use for your um, your cards and that. So that's specifically what I'm focusing on tonight. Um, I noticed myself that a lot of um, canvases and things like that use mixed media. And I want to show you how you can kind of um, make it smaller and use it for cards for, uh, specifically. So let's go ahead and get started. So tonight, like I said, I'm focusing on the modeling paste. Um, all these products are by Prima. Um, this is one part of the Art Basics line by Finnebar. She does a lot of fantastic uh, mixed media things, so if you don't know her, I would definitely check her out. So, I'm just going to move some of this around. These are kind of the three techniques that I'm going to be showing you tonight, how to create them. Um, you can just sort of do a bunch of these backgrounds all at once, so that when you, hey Pam, hey Kina, when you go to make your cards, you can just pull from your stash and you've already got these set up. The fun thing I like about these particular ones too is they would make great for masculine cards because that always seems to be a complaint that there's nothing, um, you know, available or easily available with for masculine cards. Now you can make your own, not to worry. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start, obviously, um, this is four inches by five and a quarter. So I've already pre-cut the, the pieces of paper so that when I finish the project I can just attach it to the base of a regular A2 size card. So I'm going to be using the stencils tonight. These are all by Prima. Some are older so they may not be available but this is one of their newer ones and I'm actually going to be using it for an upcoming class. So I'll show you how to use that. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you kind of how to add the modeling paste. And you can use any stencil that you've got. Um, the thing I like about these Finnebar um, Art Basics is that they're in a tube, so you can kind of squeeze out what you need. So they basically, you're going to take your stencil, and the fun thing too about using modeling paste is you don't have to use the entire stencil. You could use a section of it here or there. All you're really wanting to do is to create a texture on a white piece of paper. So. I'm just going to squeeze out a little amount here. That's all I'm going to need. Now you can certainly um, go back and add more if you want a thicker layer, um, but keeping in mind it's going to take longer to dry. So, and then all you do is you use some kind of spatula knife or palette knife. You can also use an old credit card. I've used that in a pinch. That works as well. And you just scrape it on. And like I said, you don't have to use, you can just add a little bit more. You don't have to use the entire stencil. You can use it in sections. Then you just pull it up. 
Now, I don't know if you can see that. It's got the little texture. So now I'm just going to move my stencil to another area that I maybe want to add some more. And I've still got some on here, so I'm just going to use that. And just attach it and kind of smoosh it right down. And like I said, you don't want a super thick layer. Because it is going to take longer to dry. But all you need is like a really thin layer. So a little of this goes a long way and it'll last you a while. And just pull up your stencil. Just like that. Okay, so now these actually take, um, I timed it earlier this afternoon. They take probably about 10 minutes to dry, 15 minutes to dry, so not a super long time. You can get started, but I've already got some that are, of course, pre-done. Put some of that off of there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start with is the wax. Now these come in a variety of colors. They come in um, metallic and um, matte and different things like that. She's also recently done them now. They've changed the packaging to not be in a tin anymore. They're in a tube, just like her other modeling paste and things like that are. So I think that's kind of cool. Now, all you really need to do, and I've had this thing for probably close to a year, if not more. So like I said, these things last a while. And you don't need a super lot. I just use that amount. And then all I do, I'm going to put something down to cover my work surface here. My handy dandy paper towel. And then all I'm going to do is rub it on. And what it's doing is it's picking up the detail of the paste that's dry. And you can just blend it out. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'll do the same in the other section here that I've done. And you don't need a super a lot amount. You just kind of rub your finger right over it. And then the wax will pick up the detailing of the modeling paste. Now you can see here, I kind of want a little darker, a little more gold color. So I'm just going to add some more paste. It's not rocket science. Super easy to use. And then just like that. Now, of course, you could leave it completely like that. Now, these waxes can also be used on wood, resin, all kinds of different stuff. And you could actually use like a stipple brush if you really wanted to get into the details, if you're trying to cover something that's got a lot of texture and a lot of detail to it. Now, this I can just put on the paper. And I'm thinking this is going to be like a masculine card with gears and um, steampunk kind of thing. So I'm not really looking for any like finished neat product. I kind of want it a little rough looking, you know, because guys can be a little rough and tumble. So just like that. And then what I would do is I'd probably put my image here or my saying and bada boom, bada bing, you've got a nice little cute little card. So these are the waxes. <clears throat> so like I said, something to try on your cards. Um, you could also do it if you ran the piece of paper, say, through an embossing folder. And then um, take your finger like I just did here, rub it over the embossed area. You'll get the same technique. Okay. Get this off my finger a little bit. So that's the first, the first one there. The next one is actually uh, also by Finnebar is her Sparks um, acrylic paints. Now, I don't know if you can see the shimmer of this thing. Oh, I love these paints. They're sparkly and glittery. And with Christmas time coming up, these would make a great addition to your stamped cards. So let's go ahead and create that background. Okay. And basically the technique is exactly the same. Fold this up a little bit. Now, also, too, something you want to keep in mind, um, I'm not going to do it now, but I'll do it as soon as this video is over. You definitely want to clean off your stencils right away because once, uh, excuse me, once, <laughs> once the modeling paste dries, it's super hard to get out and it could ruin your stencil. Um, so you want to make sure you clean it off right away. Okay. And again, we're just going to put a little goop on our 
palette knife here. And this technique is great for, as I said, creating texture and interest on your backgrounds. So you don't need a completely finished, perfect stencil. And I don't know if you can see it, like some of the spaces here are missing. I'm okay with it. And like I said, you don't have to use every piece of the stencil, every area of the stencil. There we go. Just like that. Real super easy. There you go. Now, if you notice that maybe you've got a little something somewhere that you don't want it to, you can actually just take a paper towel or even your palette knife and kind of scrape it off. And it comes pretty much right up. Okay. Now again, I'd set this aside to dry. And I have one already. Now this, as I said, um, is one of their newer stencils. But as you can see with this particular piece here, I actually used a different area of the stencil. So you've got all kinds of things you can use. You're not really limited to only one piece of the stencil or one stencil. You can do all kinds of fun things with them. Okay. Now with the sparks, it's really liquid. It gets really flowy and shimmery. I love it. And I'm just going to use a dry brush technique. So what that means is, oh, this one's wet. That's because I washed it earlier. And it's not dry. Okay. We're going to use a foam brush. It gives great coverage. It goes super fast. And you can actually combine different colors. So if you wanted to use this one with, say, um, one of her other colors, like a goldy color or some other um, complementary color, you can certainly do that. These blend great. They're super creamy. So you just kind of go over the embossed or the stencil part. If you can see that, how shimmery and that, that is. And like I said, it just picks up all the embossed area. Super fun. So now I'll do this little back area. And you don't need a lot. That's what's so great. With all of these products, a little goes a long way. So maybe at first it might seem a, a little bit pricey, but in all honesty, amortized over the life that you'll have the product, it's actually pennies. It's it'll last you a while. Okay. And then I'll just kind of dry brush the rest of the paper and just like that so again and this these are kind of distressed backgrounds so I don't want it super neat I don't need it super clean um, you just kind of want to play with some of your stuff and have fun with it and again these are the sparks um, paints by Finnebar and, and actually, it's already dry. So, I mean, that's another great thing. These dry, these paints dry super fast too. Done and done. Now, you can see I went over this one a little bit more. So you can see the difference. And that's, again, with one stencil, one color of paint, and I got, you know, two different looks. Okay. Now, last, but certainly not least, are the artisan powers powders now these are also super fun that's how I created this one um, this would look great for like a beach uh, card um, mermaid cards are really hot right now um, even thinking of you a sympathy card unfortunately if you have to send one of those um, this kind of really lends itself well to that now with this one obviously this is a bigger stencil than my piece of paper so in this instance, you could go over the entire piece of paper. Not something I'm really interested in doing, but it's an option. Okay, I've lost my palette knife. All right. So with this one, I'm going to put a little bit more on than I did. So I can get a bit more coverage. And again, all I'm doing is scraping it on. Pushing down and scraping down. You don't want to go back and forth. You always want to go in one direction. 
because if you go back and forth like this, it's going to get underneath the stencil and it could ruin your stencil. So you always want to go in one direction. And finding, I find it going down and towards you a lot easier. Okay, we're going to pull this bad boy up. Okay, so you can see, again, I didn't, ha I didn't cover the whole thing, and I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Now, I could put down the stencil again and go over this bottom part, but, yeah, I'm okay with it. All right. Now, these are some of the ones, this is the ones, this is what I did earlier. You can see here, there's a spot missing here, there's some missing here, but, you know, I got a lot of coverage. This is the one I did earlier. Now, these artisan powders can also be used on um, wood, resin, what else does it say here, and paper. Um, any surface to create an antique vintage look. Okay, so what I did was I actually, comes out like a, like a powder, like a face powder kind of almost. So what I did was took my really soft brush and just kind of pick some up and then kind of dabbed it onto the paper and then swirled it around. So you can see it's already starting to pick up the detail. Okay. certainly leave it like that but I wanted to add some contrast so I'm going to go in with a darker color same technique you could also use a stipple brush that would certainly give you more color it, it probably would give you um, kind of a darker look than the softer one now I'm going to chop some of this off and then just swirl this around I'm just going to use my finger to go in here and smooth it out a bit. These are really fun to work with. Okay, so that came out a little bluer than I wanted. So I'm actually just going to go back with the lighter one and we'll see how that works. The thing too that I like about these things is that um, I'm not using all these techniques you can actually just use on thick cardstock. It's not matte board, it's not chipboard, anything like that. It's just you probably do want to use a thicker cardstock, like maybe a 110 or 100 pound weight. Um, some of your thinner stuff, like a 65 pound weight, probably would buckle a little bit and it wouldn't lay as flat. But um, just use your regular cardstock, like I said, heavy weight, about 110 pounds. You're good to go. So now we've got one, two, three. We've got six backgrounds that are ready to go for our cards. All in a matter of about 20 minutes. So don't be afraid of mixed media. Card makers out there, you can use them on your cards. It doesn't always have to be an elaborate 12 by 12 canvas with a bunch of layers and all kinds of things going on you could just get your feet wet start with some simple backgrounds and once you get more into it and get more involved definitely you'll be wanting to buy all this fun stuff to use and it just makes your cards interesting um, i hope everyone has a good evening and i will talk to you all later have a great night